Hello and welcome to the not-so-distant future. Well, not really much has changed. Well, apart from some new means of transport. Ah, what's this? Novel foods. Well, there's an EU regulation on novel foods that dates back to a time long, long ago. The year 1997. But it was so old that some almost 20 years later, the European Parliament gave it a reboot. Before 1997, specialist or very unusual foods that had a small consumer market fell under the category of novel foods. Every country was responsible for deciding what was a novel food. But today, there's a centralised EU procedure. So what are novel foods? Well, novel foods can be produced or isolated from the cells or tissue cultures of animals, plants, microorganisms, algae and fungi. Professor Mark Post has created the first hamburger cultured from the cells of a cow. We actually are producing meat. It's just not in a cow. The stem cell techniques are very useful for growing beef. We take a few cells from a cow, they divide by themselves, and if we provide those anchor points, the future tendons, they will self-organize into muscle. So a few cells that we take from this cow can turn into uh, 10 tons of meat. Foods that undergo a production process can also come under the banner of novel foods, like for example nanomaterials, like the ones being used in this lab in Brussels. Les nanoparticules sont des particules dont la taille est typiquement un millième du diamètre de vos cheveux. Elles sont utilisées en alimentaire comme colorant, par exemple dans les dosettes de lait, la couleur blanche crémeuse est donnée par les nanoparticules d'oxyde de titane, ou comme conservateur et édulcorant. De par leur très petite taille, la, la réactivité de surface est très grande et donc elles sont potentiellement toxiques. Il est donc nécessaire de continuer euh, d'avoir davantage de recherches sur ces nanomatériaux. The aim is to encourage innovation in the agri-food sector. And do you know what all else you can eat? Insects, just like some of these house crickets. We make different uh, kind of products with it. Here is dried crickets. Here uh, you can see uh, cricket meatballs. So in comparison with cows, to make the same amount of uh, as proteins in a cow, they need uh, 25 times less food. They need, uh, they need 300 times less water and they produce 60 times uh, less greenhouse gases. So yeah, it's tasting really good. We can also now eat traditional cuisines from far-flung third countries, provided they have a 25-year history proving that they carry no health risk to consumers. And what about cloned animals? They're expensive to produce, so it's unlikely that we're going to find them in our hamburgers. And what about the offspring of cloned animals? Well, that's another story. They will be treated like novel foods until specific legislation, which is currently being checked by the Parliament, gets adopted. The European Food Safety Authority checks that foods are safe for us to eat. As the saying goes, prevention is better than a cure. If the EU cannot properly ascertain whether a product is safe or not, for example, if the science isn't behind it, it won't be allowed on the European market.